How is a BD person born? Somewhere between fire and hell. No. Uh, but realistically, BD is a unique role here, and a lot of people do it. It's because it's a very generic kind of thing. A lot of people are in the business arm of a company, and they can't classify themselves as, let's say, a salesman or strategic development. They're specifically in this vague role so that they can do whatever the company needs in that quarter. We're here at Startup BD in Pivotal Labs, uh, sponsored by Founder Suite. Uh, we're talking about business development at startups, so getting a better sense of what that really means. Just by bringing everyone together to talk about their struggles, their successes, their challenges, it's a great venue to, to learn, essentially. What is business development? Um, business development is pretty simple. So, you know, there are a lot of different ways that you can get users, uh, and there are a lot of different ways you can get paid, and there are a lot of different ways that you can kind of grow engagement with your users. Um, and business development is basically the act of doing it manually. Um, and the way you do it is through kind of legal contracts, marketing, sales, uh, product integrations, etc. And so BD encapsulates kind of the manual components of working with other people. To me, business development is really about uh, kind of thinking outside the box and often involving kind of depth and product uh, related to business development. What's interesting about business development is that um, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not a discipline that's usually taught like in schools. It's something you kind of learn on the streets. Um, I mean, you're right, there is, there's no course for it. Uh, no one's going to teach you kind of how to do this. Um, I think in a lot of ways uh, I learned by trial and error. So I came in, had absolutely no idea what I was doing, and really kind of tweaked my method for doing things over a period of time. So learning, you know, what gets someone interested in talking to you, especially um, at companies where you know you're really small and you're trying to talk to large companies, um, what makes them uh, really want to work with you, and then you know how can you structure the right deal so that partner is you know a long term partner in the growth of your business. One of the things that a lot of the speakers were discussing today is that sales is generally much more uh, concrete. I'm expected to sell product X or service Y to you in exchange for money. I think with BD you're structuring different types of transactions, whether it's licensing deals or partnership deals or um, different types of business transactions that isn't quite as clear as you're paying me $100 for product X, for example. I think they're actually pretty similar. I think sales is usually selling the core product, and so you're working usually directly to a customer, either a consumer or a business, or maybe through a channel partner. Um, but with partnerships, uh, you tend to be working on, in my case, product and software integrations, or maybe with hardware manufacturers or carriers or folks like that. Um, and instead of selling the kind of core product to an end user, um, you're often selling kind of a product integration or how to improve their product or help their users and, and kind of to mutual benefit. Um, so they're actually very, very similar in that they're both the manual components of kind of achieving a goal uh, just in different ways. It's an incredibly important activity for both big enterprises and small startups. At a big corporation, BD can be broken into a lot of core segments, everything from corporate development to more of a sales kind of role. Where at a small business or at a startup, BD wears all of those hats at once. So you'll commonly find BD guys doing everything from M&A conversations to distribution deals to maybe even negotiating leases on the buildings. As a small company, no one knows anything about you. And so you have to be like very good at busting down doors um, and getting people to pay attention to you and to listen to, you and to, listen to your message. Um, we were based off of this theory of Dunbar's number. 150 relationships is the max number of relationships any human can have at any time. And there are smaller concentric circles within that. And so I think an important question to ask in business is you know, who are the 150 most important relationships to the business? I think the, the downside of BD as a career is that you don't get to manage big teams, right? Like a, a BD team is never a big team. And the other downside is you have to reinvent your job every three months, you know, and you, you can go out and you can sell, you know, 
the other company on doing a deal with your company, which is you know, hard enough, but then it's even harder to go sell your own company on doing that deal, right? Because BD, it's not, it's not like sales where you give them a product and they give you money. It's, you, you know, it, you're, you're sort of trying to bring your company here, bring the other company here and, and kind of meet in the middle, create value, which is not always very apparent. And when you're done, it's like, you know, you got this deal done and no one knows whether it's a good thing or a bad thing for another year or two. So I think it's, a, it's, a, it's difficult to really define what success looks like in BD. I think that's part of why people like it. It's, you know, amorphous, it's a challenge, it's strategic, but it is, it is difficult to, to know what success looks like. The event was good tonight. A lot of really interesting tactical details on building partnerships um, and a lot of good hacks. A lot of good BD hacks came out tonight, so that was kind of fun. Uh, I think Jake of Quixie had a lot of interesting uh, hacks on how to kind of fake it till you make it, how to get people to pay attention, and how to drive a process for it. I thought that was really good. Uh, yeah, it was an interesting event.